Hi everyone, Nathan here again with another True Tech Troubleshooting tutorial. So I want to go into an intermediate level discussion of drop downs and show you in a tutorial how to use the initial choice of one drop down and make it affect the choices you, you are allowed to choose in the second. Or in other words, create a cascade of options from one drop down to the next. I'm going to demonstrate that and show you the code for how to do that. I also want to briefly mention that I'm now using Adobe Lifecycle Designer ES4, which is the latest version that just came out this summer from Adobe. And just in passing, I can say that it's not really that much better or different than the other. There's been some, some bug fixes that have added a few things to the way that the user interface works. The only main improvement has been this preview HTML, which doesn't affect most Lifecycle Designer users from the past because you have to have an Adobe Lifecycle server to make that work and that's very cost prohibitive for the small time designer. Lifecycle Enterprise starts off in the $100,000 range. So anyway, I'm using ES4 and uh, I like it but really not a lot of improvements over ES3. Okay, so back to what we're talking about. In this form, I have three drop downs. Year, Make, and Model and it's sim uh, simulating possibly some kind of car dealership and how they might go about uh, in a form describing a car that's being sold on their lot and so the user chooses one chooses the next chooses the third but if you if you notice if I don't choose anything and I go right to model there's no options there and if I go to year I've got a list of years. If I go to make, I've got a list of car types. And then the choice of the car type, or the, the, the choice of the make, creates then inside of model a list for me to choose from. And if I change this to Zuzu, now model shows only a Zuzu cars. If I go back and choose Kia, then I only have Kia choices. And so basically the choice of the make dropdown is affecting the, the choices I have in the model dropdown. And so I want to show you how we do that in JavaScript. So basically in JavaScript, if I go to my script editor, you see a script that's about 454 lines long. And instead of going through that and confusing people, I'd rather just show it to you in this text field here. This is the basic structure of what in JavaScript is referred to as a switch statement. And that's because of the first word that declares it. Uh, all this switch statement is really is a glorified if statement. If this, then this. If that, then that. Um, and and you, could, you could write out everything we've done here in this switch statement as an if statement, but it would get very cumbersome and hard to read and difficult to manage because there's so many lines of code. And so a better way to do that is to use a switch statement. And the basic outline of a switch statement is uh, putting a value into the switch call or the switch function and then whatever value this dot raw value is case one case two execute the code underneath that so in other words if this dot raw value meaning the choice I made in the make dropdown if it equals one then add these five items to the model drop down. If the choice equals two, then add the seven types of cars to the model drop down, and so on. Of course, in our actual example, this goes on one, two, three, all the way to 23, and that represents all the choices I have in the CBO make drop down. And you can see that over here on the field list. So I have 23 different different makes of cars and those 23 makes are assigned under the binding tab a value of 1 through 23 and of course they're in alphabetical order just just to help me keep track of everything and so the 1 represents all the different kinds of Acuras the 2 represents all the different kinds of Audis 3 BMW 4 Geo and so on I'm only showing you the first two just so that I don't run out of room on my screen here 
And then I have this last, last statement, default, meaning if it so happens that somebody makes a choice that's not available in my list, meaning it's not 1 through 23, then default to please rechoose make. And that's only just a kind of an error handler. Uh, there is no situation the way I've programmed this that they could choose anything but the 23 different choices I've already given them. If I allowed custom text entry, that would create a situation where maybe they could they could type in an answer that wasn't there. Uh, we'll say fiat, and then that would be the the result that came out. But if I don't have that there, then that can't happen. And so basically what happens is the end user chooses the make, the switch statement is executed, and then only the items underneath that choice get added to this final dropdown. So the magic happens right here in this code, and that code is placed in a very special place, the exit event. So if we go to the exit event, we see of the make dropdown, we see all that code, the 200, or I'm sorry, the 450 lines of code. Also, at the beginning of that code, we see this CBO model dot clear items, and what that does is it clears out anything that's already there. So, the effect that that makes is, let's say I choose Geo, and there's all my Geos, but then oh, I made a mistake. I really meant to choose Acura. I don't want to see the Geo items in here anymore. I only want to see Acura items, and so if I don't have that clear items statement before my switch statement, then the geo items would still have been left in there and it would have doubled up. So the reason I'm calling this intermediate is because this is some advanced JavaScript, more advanced than we've the two and three lines of codes type JavaScripts we've been doing in the past. So it's very long, but it's still one basic statement. And this can go out into any number of choices as long as you want to keep typing. The advanced way of doing this would be to somehow use the switch statement to populate that last drop down based on a database of information that's constantly in flux. That's more advanced. That's not what we're going to go into in this tutorial. We'll save that for an advanced tutorial later on. So I hope this helps. I hope you can utilize this in your form design. Of course, you can always make uh, comments or questions. Uh, a lot of times I get some good ideas for new tutorials from questions that users and subscribers post on the other YouTube videos. So keep those coming. Give me some more ideas for new tutorials for the future. So then until next time, I'd like to remind you, IT problems and PDF form problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. We'll see you next time.